Hey ADV riders, this is Head to Wind. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to disassemble a set of 950 carburetors from uh, 2000. What was this? It's the 2006 950 Venture. So here we go. So these are the fuel lines. We're going to get these off of here. Get them out of the way. that these guys slide a little bit. Depending upon how long the carburetors have been sitting, sometimes the O-rings that are behind the bridge here will start leaking. So this may or may not be something you want to deal with. You also notice that this plug right here is the TPS sensor. I leave it put on the carburetors and disconnect it from the main frame uh, harness. Um, if you disconnect this, then it means that you have to reset the throttle position sensor, and that's just extra work that you don't need to do. This bolt right here is a 7mm head. It holds the ground wire for the carb heaters that only work at a particular temperature. So take the, this bolt out when the, bike, when the carburetors are on the frame. Um, these carburetors have been worked on a little bit in the past by somebody else. Um, these are the bowl vents, and I'm going to take these guys off, and ultimately I'm going to replace them with a s separate um, vent hoses, one for the front and one for the back. This is the front carburetor, and in the Adventure Machines kits, that would be the 11-inch hose that's provided in the kit, and then you use the 10-inch hose in the back. Okay, so that guy's off of there. I previously had removed these adapters. Um, takes a three millimeter hex to get these bolts out. These two bolts right here exposes the air jets. Um, I'll just point these guys out. This is a 40 mil 40. This is the um, 50, and then, then this is the 80. And this is typically the one that we change out uh, in the Adventure Machines kit to the, the 70. Okay, so um, what I'm going to do is pull out my trusty uh, Milwaukee. Helps if I have a battery. Okay. So I'm going to pull all these out. The main air jet tends to get plugged, so you definitely want to make sure that those are clean. I'm going to pull that one out. And this is the, what's called the idle air cut valve um, jet. This, these two combine into the idle circuit. Let me just bang this out. Black covers are the diaphragm covers. This is where the slide assembly goes up into. There's a soft rubber diaphragm and a spring underneath here. Uh, one for the front, one for the back. We're just going to pop these off real quick. These are shouldered screws. So when you go to put them back together, you just need to make them snug. You don't want to over tighten them or they will cause you grief and problems. Each one of the slides and the diaphragms and the springs, are, they're all identical, so you don't have to worry about keeping track of which one's where. Inside here, this is how we get the needle out of the slide. Squeeze these guys together, this assembly pops out, and the needle drops out. The other thing you'll notice in 
down inside there there's a shiny washer. You need to get that guy out. So we fold this up like that and just tap it. And it comes out. Okay. That way it doesn't get misplaced as we're going through everything. see some of the, the residue from the bike sitting and what happens with modern fuels when bikes sit and the remaining fuel that's in there is kind of stinky too. Okay, so slides are out and this kind of white residue is fairly common. Um, not exactly sure where it's coming from, but I believe it's associated with the alcohol that's a lot of, in a lot of the modern fuels. We start popping the foot bowl screws out. It's really good to have a, a solid number two to get these out. They have a tendency to strip. So, the heads of the screw. If they strip, um, yeah, you're kind of stuck and you end up having to kind of tap on them. Um, if one of them doesn't want to come out, you can use an impact driver that looks something very similar to this with a number two bit on the end of it. And the action of hitting it and turning at the same time a lot of times will pop them loose. You don't want to hit it very hard, but it is a way to get them out. Okay, so this is the bowl drain. Um, ironically, it's very difficult to get to it, and when the engine and the carburetors and everything is assembled, so draining the fuel out of the carburetors is almost an impossibility unless you're going to completely disassemble things. Okay, so diving in here, this is the idle mixture screw. This is the pilot jet main jet and start jet. Um, stock trim, this is going to be about two, two and a half. This is going to be a 42. Uh, rear carburetor is going to be a 160 main and this is going to be a 68 start jet. We don't mess with the start jets. So I'm going to bust these out. idle mixture screw, there's a spring. You can see on the tip of this, I don't know if you can see it, but we definitely need to clean that. But down inside here is a washer and an o-ring. We need to get those out of there. My tool of choice is a safety wire with a little hook on the end. Just go down inside there and grab that assembly. You can see the the washer and the o-ring. You can do that for the front carburetor as well. Okay. Needle and the spring are out.
these screws hold the, the pivot pin for the floats. Later we'll talk about how to set float height, things of that nature. Cut those guys out. Okay, so pretty much rapid fire. Um, that's what it takes to get these carburetors pulled down. And then in the next video, I'm going to talk about um, getting them cleaned up, um, and uh, and then what jets go where in the jet kit.